Yo, it's your boy Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics. Back at you with a new video. Today's new video is my NFL top five wide receivers going into 2023. Now let's get right into the video. It was definitely very difficult to go over my top five going into 2023, but I think I did a pretty good job. And uh, comment below what you guys think, if you guys agree or disagree with the list, and put in your top five so I can kind of review and go over what you guys think. Starting off at number five. At number five, I got Stefan Diggs. Now, Stefan Diggs, we already know he is the real deal holy field. And I like this little stat muse thing. So it gives you a whole full breakdown. Okay. Diggs has played eight seasons for the Vikings and the Bills, 703 catches for 8,812 yards and scored 59 tutties. Last year, 108 receptions, 1,429 yards, 11 tutties with a 13.2 average. And then I can go over here, click on the stats. And you can kind of go over his career in 2015 all the way to 2022. Obviously, he started to take off once he got linked with Josh Allen. I think he's still going to end up being one of the best wide receivers in the game. And obviously, when Naheem Hines had that accident, ACL tear or a knee damage. So he's going to be out for the year. Their running back core and the running back room is already very light. So this is going to give him even more opportunities to dominate on a game in, game out level. They should be able to compete with every other team, including the Kansas City Chiefs. And I have him at number five. At number four, I got my guy, Jamar Chase. Now, I think Jamar has a good opportunity to be able to kind of take his game to the next level. As we can see, 87 receptions, 1,046 yards, nine tutties, a 12-yard average. Okay, but he only ended up having 12 games played. So we already know that his stats would be much, much higher. He's played two seasons for the Bengals, 168 catches, 2,501 yards, scored 22 touchdowns. I don't think he's that far behind, you know, Justin Jefferson, even though we know Jefferson is one of the top dogs in the league. As you can take a look at the stats, we just need him to get back closer to playing a full schedule like he did the year before. 17 games played in 2021 right? 81 receptions, 128 targets. We need to get that cleaned up a little bit, but he had 13 tutties. And I think that number would have been pretty accurate if he would have had five more games. Hell, he could have ended up having 14 or 15. I love, love, love me some Jamar Chase. The guy is a freaking stud. And this could be a big breakout year for Jamar Chase. I mean, he's got Joe Burrow. Stefan Diggs has got Josh Allen. You got two of the top five quarterbacks in the league. And I just think even though you got T Higgins and avoid the Boyd, Tyler Boyd and Joe Mixon, you got all these options. I think this could be a big breakout year for my guy, Jamar Chase. I see you. You are the man at number five, Stefan Diggs at number four, Jamar Chase. And at number three, now this was kind of tough for me because I was trying to think to myself, okay, can I actually slide him down even lower? than I want to. Um, and I was kind of considering putting maybe him at like four or possibly at five. And I know that kind of sounds crazy, but you got to think Devonte Adams, you know, has always had the blessings of an Aaron Rodgers, a a Ron Rodgers, Rodgers and the Packers. Right. And then he ended up having, you know, Carr, you know, and now he's on the saints. So now you're going to get to a point when we look at the stat line, hundred receptions, 1,516 yards, 14 tutties with a 15.2 average, which is fucking phenomenal. Now let's take a breakdown and look at the stats overall. I mean, look at these stats that he's, you know, piling up year in and year out, especially as we're going from, you know, 2018 and beyond, right? 1,386 yards, 2019, 997 yards with a little bit of injuries, 1,374 yards, 1,553 yards. And then last year with the Raiders played every game, right? 17 games right? 17 games played, 100 receptions out of 180 on 180 targets. We need to clean that up a little bit, but 1,516 yards, 14 tutties. So the last three years, 18, 11, and 14. But one thing that I wanted to bring up that's going to be very concerning to me, and the reason that I have him a little bit lower than I wanted is one guy and one guy only. And it's this guy right here, Jimmy Garoppolo. All right. Jimmy Garoppolo is not someone that you necessarily I feel that you can count on, you know, year in and year out. And if you actually look at his stat line, it's not really that good as far as like the tutties and whatnot. Look at the tutties. All right. You start off in 2019. He had 27, right? Then 7, 20 and 16. So as long as he can stay healthy, I know Devontae Adams can do his role. But if he's only doing 16 total, well, I mean, what are we talking 
10 for Devontae? I mean, I don't know. So I think that there is a chance where Jimmy Garoppolo, hopefully he can get healthy, trying to pass all his tests. But really what it's going to come down to with Devontae Adams being a little bit lower on my list is primarily this guy right here, you know? It's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. Can we really count on him to be able to stay healthy throughout the year? And if it's not him, you know, who are we talking about that's going to be throwing the ball to Devontae Adams? Now, does he still have, you know, top two, top three talent? Yes, I definitely agree. He's got number two, number three talent. But I, you know, I, I have to, I guess, give him the benefit of the doubt that if Garoppolo can stay healthy, maybe he can have a season similar to that 2019 season where he threw for 27 tutties. And if he throws for 27, right, and he can stay healthy, there's a good chance that Devontae Adams is going to get 10 to 15. But it's all kind of a big question mark. I originally had Devontae Adams at five, but I was thinking to myself, can I really put him at five? He's still talented right? Uber talented. And I just couldn't do it just yet. So I got to give him the benefit of the doubt and put my guy Devonte Adams at number three, even though my heart says maybe he has a little bit of a down year if Jimmy can't stay healthy, then he'll slide down to five. But for the time being overall as a skill set, just him as a player, right? Not the quarterback with Joe Burrow, not the quarterback with Josh Allen, but Devonte Adams himself. Is he more skilled than Jamar Chase? and Stefan Diggs today, even though he's getting a little bit older. Yes, I do think that he still has it. So at this point, I got to put Devontae Adams at number three. At number two, you already know what it is. I got your guy, Tyreek Hill. And uh, like I said, with Tyreek Hill, you know, new quarterback with Tua, lots of controversy. Can Tua get healthy? Can he not? He's played seven seasons with the Chiefs and the Dolphins, 598 catches, 8,340 yards. He scored 76 touchdowns, which is freaking incredible. And as we go over to the stats, I mean, six touchdowns in 2016 with KC, then seven, okay? 2018, 12, 2019, seven, 2020, he had uh, 13, and then obviously his last season with Kansas City with nine, last year with seven. But if you have to go and look at the yards, right, 119 receptions in 2022, 111 in 2021, and then look at the targets, 159 targets from Mahomes, right, 170 targets from Tua and company, right? So you might not get the touchdowns as high, but sometimes when you get into the top three, it's really about more yards and receptions, right? 1,710 yards last season, 1,239 yards the year before with Mahomes, and then 1,276 in 2020. 119 receptions, 1,710 yards. Yes, we would like the touchdowns to be 10 or higher, but we can't underestimate the fact that this guy is a baller and he's not going to quit anytime soon. Really love Tyreek the free kill, and that's why I got him at number two. Now, there is concerns at the quarterback position with Tua and as well with Devontae Adams with Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm not you know, discrediting that. We know Jamar Chase has got Burrow. Diggs has got Josh Allen. They are in better situations to dominate, right? with their quarterbacks, but I still got to give the benefit of the doubt that regardless of who the quarterback is for Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill, I still got to keep them in my top three, uh, and that is big facts. And at number one, you already know what it is. It's the guy that I picked number one in fantasy last year, and uh, I know a lot of people were kind of like wondering, they're like, oh, do you really think he's that damn good? Yes, I do. All right, last year's stats, 128 receptions, 1,809 yards, eight tutties. I mean, the guy is the man. I mean, I don't really see him slowing down anytime soon. Uh, and when you're looking at overall into the stat line, I mean, this guy is freaking phenomenal, right? 16 games played, 88 receptions at 128 targets. He's had 1,400 yards, seven tutties in his rookie year. 17 games played, so you know he's durable. 108 receptions for 1,616 yards, 10 tutties. And then obviously 17 games played last year. So he's only missed one game in three years. Phenomenal. 128 receptions, right, out of 184 targets, 1,809 yards. If there's anybody that can crack 2,000 yards, it's him. Now, you would like seven, 10, and eight tutties to be bigger. But again, there's other options on the team as well, even though Adam Thielen is no longer there. Absolutely love my guy, Jay Jetta. And in all honesty, I really do believe that Jay Jetta has the closest chance if he can stay healthy for a good chunk of his career and play like, let's say, 10, 15, you know, 18, 19, 20 years, whatever it may be, right? You got Jerry Rice. 
right? Randy Moss, T.O., Megatron, Larry Fitzgerald. I honestly feel that if Jay Jetta stays healthy, he will be the second coming of Jerry Rice, regardless of who the quarterback is. I think that obviously he, if he can upgrade from Kirk Cousins, that's going to benefit him. But I think when it's all said and done, he can catch up to T.O. and Randy Moss, who are Randy Moss is normally in most people's number two book. T.O. number three. I think Justin Jefferson has a very, very good chance to be the number two wide receiver of all time if he can stay healthy. Now, if I didn't really believe that, I wouldn't say it. So again, my top five going into 2023 at number five, Stefan Diggs. Number four, Jamar Chase. Number three, Devontae Adams. Number two, Tyreek the free kill. And number one is my guy, Jay Jetta, Justin Jefferson hitting the gritty. Now, make sure you comment below and let me know if you guys think that the list is accurate or if you would flip-flop some of the positions. There is no wrong answers with the list. All these guys are great. And also at five, you could also consider like, you know, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, uh, uh, AJ Brown would be the one that I would argue with him and Diggs. It was very, very close. Uh, And I would have him probably sitting at number six with uh, A.J. Brown, obviously, with Fly, Eagles Fly. Uh, I love you guys, and I appreciate you guys very, very much. And again, comment below what you guys think, and I'll be back at it tomorrow with my top five tight end list going into 2023. Let's get it!